Let's get started with the women's elite eight in college basketball taking center stage tonight with the rematch. Everybody wanted number one seed Iowa versus number three LSU, the reigning defending champions LSU. Both teams met last year drawing record breaking TV audiences over 12 million to be exact. LSU defeated Iowa to secure their program's first national championship. However, according to both coaches, it's a replay that should be happening in the final four. Regardless, this game is all about the stars, Angel Reese and Caitlin Clark. I can't wait for this. I know that South Carolina is the monster. They're back-to-back -back undefeated seasons. I get all of that. But when you talk about a rematch of last year's national title game, when you see Caitlin Clark shoot 9 of 22 from the field, 8 of 19 from three-point range, even though she finished with 30 points, 8 assists, the bottom line is going up against LSU. They drubbed them. They beat them by 17 points. Angel Reese had a field. They was torn her near the end of the game and what have you. We saw all of that, and we we imagine a rematch of this magnitude with all the hype that has come associated with Caitlin Clark, combined with the chip on the shoulders that LSU collectively has from their players to their coach Kim Mulkey herself. The bottom line is this is a matchup that you want to see, and I'm going to say it right here for the American people. This is bigger as far as I'm concerned. This is more popular as far as I'm concerned. This is more attractive as far as I'm concerned than the men's college basketball even during this time of the year the ladies have arrived make no mistake about it i got to give props to where it's due and i can't wait to see this matchup tonight that's just one item now let me get to talking about the other elite eight game which features Paige beckers of UConn playing against USC's freshman sensation Juju Watkins. Both Elite Eight games represent a golden age for women's college basketball, which I was just alluding to. It's Caitlin Clark on one hand, it's Angel Reese on another, okay? It's Juju Watkins. The girl is special. She's a freshman, averaging 27 and 7 in her first NCAA postseason tournament. She is absolutely spectacular. She's going to be the face of women's college basketball for the foreseeable future. And Lord help you, if she ends up winning this game over UConn and she gets to the final four and it's her against an LSU. It's her against a Caitlin Clark. It's her against South Carolina. This is what it's all about. The women, in my opinion, have figured out how to be even more marketable. We know they've got the skill set, but now they've really, really gravitated towards being more marketable than ever before, and I think that has elevated the attractiveness of the game even more so. So the fellas in college basketball, you better look out. The ladies are here. Let me get to my guest right now because this is the perfect person to talk about. Played at Tennessee, is an outstanding college basketball analyst for ESPN, does, doing a phenomenal job. The one and only Andrea Carter is here with me right now. How are you? How are you doing? Stephen A., I'm great. I'm, one, happy to be on the Stephen A. Smith Show. That's Thank just you. a blessing in itself. And Thank two, you. the way these games have shaked out, the superstars you just talked about, for me to have the opportunity to talk about their game, to watch them play, to break down what makes them great and where they can be even better. I love this so much and to have to be able to do it on this stage with these athletes it's a blessing i'm blessed that's the only thing you're, i can say you're a former player at the university of tennessee obviously you're an outstanding college basketball analyst you're just doing a sensational job i'm so proud to call you a colleague with us both working in our day jobs at espn i gotta ask you in all your years of being associated with this game have you ever seen it like this from a popularity standpoint, where we're looking at an Elite Eight with a Caitlin Clark against LSU, where we're looking at South Carolina waiting? They're the monsters right now that everybody's got to worry about getting knocked off by them. Of course, Juju Watkins, I just brought up UConn, their 28th Elite Eight appearance, for crying out loud, led by Gino Oriana, uh, Oriema. Has the game ever been this popular in your estimation? No, Stephen A. It hasn't been. And trust me, I followed college basketball as a kid. Like, I grew up on women's college basketball. The games that you could watch, I was tuned into those games. I had my favorite players. I had my favorite teams. But right now, it's a combination, one, of the superstars that are on these teams, and then, two, the visibility that they have. Not just the visibility of this tournament, but the visibility of these players on their journeys throughout their career. We've gotten to see Caitlin Clark grow and blossom. We've seen her more and more every season. We've seen Angel Reese dominate and her energy and her smile and the way she talks trash and the chip on her shoulder. We've gotten to see these players throughout their career. So it has just created this huge buzz. Juju Watkins comes on the scene and what happens? Everybody knows who she is because the visibility, it's the perfect combination of visibility, 
opportunity and talent. Like this is the best combination where all three of those things have been maximized. That's why it's so big. It's the players, but it's also this moment in time where we all get to see it. Like, if you don't know, you'll soon know, and you'll catch on quickly. People are talking about it. People are bringing it up. People are putting it on social media. It's everywhere. But it's not just everywhere for no reason. It's everywhere because the players are that good. It's just, this is the biggest it's been, and it's not close. What is the number one attraction? And I know the easy answer is Caitlin Clark, but I also think a rematch, an impending rematch in some people's eyes between LSU and South Carolina based on how lethal both of these teams are, based on the near fisticuffs they nearly came two weeks ago when they went up against one another. I think that is incredibly attractive to the sport. But other people would say it starts and stops with Caitlin Clark. Where do you stand? Yeah, see, that's the thing, Stephen. And I know people are going to say that. And Iowa and Caitlin is obviously a huge story. But anybody trying to take down this South Carolina team is going to be a big story. One, if they happen to do it, it would be bigger than anything. Two, South Carolina dominating in general is a story to watch. Can that team stay undefeated? That is a story in itself, no matter who is on the opposite side. What Coach Staley has been able to do with new starters after losing the winningest class in program history. The winningest class in program history. It'd be like trying to put on your show, Stephen A., and you lost you, the producer, the camera person, the audio person, and the ops. You lost all five. Let's do it again. Right? That's what Don Staley has been able to do this year with this team. But I'm telling you, Juju going up potentially for a national championship is a story in itself because she's a freshman. Not many freshmen lead their team to the Final Four or to a national championship game. Even Paige Beckers at UConn, that's a story. She played 17 games two years ago. She missed last season. What she's been able to do, if they get back to a Final Four, that's a big deal. Paige, you heard Don Staley say she's the most elite player in the country. She says that because of Paige's efficiency. Paige doesn't take bad shots. Paige makes great decisions. And then even on the other side, I'll even throw NC State in there. Nobody had NC State in mind this is a team that had an up and down year left and right their women's team and their men's team have a why not us mentality but the story is top to bottom for all four teams on the women's side that could potentially meet in the final four i know caitlin and lsu is huge but if it doesn't happen to be iowa and lsu whoever comes out of that is just going to be as big i'm telling you andre let me put you, andre let me put you on the spot if Paige Beckers. Yeah. doesn't have that nasty knee injury that forced her to miss all the last season. If she's never had any injury issues, her or Caitlin Clark, who's that person? I'm putting you on the spot, Andrea. You on the Stephen <laughs> I'm putting you on the spot right now. I want to hear the answer to that question. This, uh, this is so tough. This is like, this is honestly, it's like deciding between, I don't know, pick your, pick your two favorite players. It's like between Asia Wilson and Brianna Stewart. It's like, do you, which point guard do you like? Which, which post player do you like? Picking between these two is so hard. For me personally, I would take a fully healthy Paige Beckers. Wow. There is no doubt. Like it's, her decision making, it's her efficiency, it's her composure, it's her leadership, it's her skill set. Like Paige, the thing about Paige, Paige can defend one through four. People underestimate Paige's ability to be a one-on-one -on -one defender for positions one through four. She's doing it coming off of her knee injuries. Paige at times has had to play back to the basket. This UConn roster wow. is depleted. They are completely depleted. When you watch the game tonight, do me a favor. Look at Connecticut's bench. Look at the young women in sweatsuits. You will see just the stature that they sit with on the bench. They're long, they're big, they're athletic, they're potential pros, they're starters, all just sitting there. And what Paige has been able to do in her composure while she's done it, a healthy Paige Beckers is so hard for me. Like, just, just go back and watch her highlights from her freshman year. She won National Player of the Year as a freshman for a reason. Yeah. She was... Injuries are the most brutal part of sports. I don't care what anybody says. They're the most brutal part. Caitlin and Paige are both amazing. If I had to pick one like you just made me do, I would go with Paige. We were talking about Caitlin Clark during my day job earlier this morning on First Take, and one of the debates that we were having was, can anything affect the legacy of Caitlin Clark? My, your position was, 
got to win the championship. When you mention the all-time greats, the Cheryl Mills, the Diana Taurasi's, the Breonna Stewart's of the world, Maya Moore's, everybody else, they won championships. You got to win at least one. My attitude was, hey, I don't think she has to win one. She just can't mess it up. She can't show up and have a bad performance. If she performs like we're accustomed to seeing Caitlin Clark perform, but you just lose to a superior LSU team, there is no crime in that. As you've had an opportunity to reflect on that perspective, do you still feel the same way? I still feel the same way, Stephen A. Like two, two parts on your take from earlier this morning. One, I think... Caitlin, something would have to be egregious for Caitlin. Even if she goes against LSU and isn't as efficient as we're used to her seeing, I don't think that affects her legacy. I think something egregious would have to happen. If there's one thing I know about Caitlin Clark, she's not going out sad. So I don't think her performance is going to have anything on her legacy because I, every moment that she has had to meet this season, she hasn't just met it. She's blasted through it. Okay. So I have no doubt she's going to perform. However, with her legacy – she has to win a championship, in my opinion, to be in the GOAT conversation. If she wins one, her resume is goaded. It's goaded. Like, it's not even close. And I still stand on great programs win multiple. But a great player, and that is Caitlin Clark, on a good team. Her team's not great. Her team is good. And I've had Iowa fans come at me crazy for saying I'm dragging Caitlin's teammates. Let me just make it clear. Me comparing a teammate to Renee Montgomery or Tina Charles or Cynthia Cooper or Tamika Catchings, that is not dragging those players. Absolutely those not. Those players are good. I'm not saying they're right. not good. I'm saying they're not lottery WNBA draft picks. So let's just get that out of the way. I'm not saying her team is bad, but her team is good. She is capable of leading them to a championship. And since that is in the realm of possibility, especially with South Carolina playing teams closely recently, it's not out of this world that they could do it. So because it's possible, that is the standard for her to be considered a GOAT. Mm -hmm. So if she loses today, that opportunity is missed. She's still the okay. greatest scorer of all time, one of the greatest of all time. She can't be considered the GOAT without a chip. Quick answers to this question. We got UConn, USC, who you got? I have USC. Because? I think they have more depth. They've got more depth on their post play. They've got a little bit more overall togetherness on the offensive end and as far as their speed up and down the court like UConn's been great but they rely heavily on two freshmen KK Arnold and Ashlyn Shade Ashlyn Shade has played great KK Arnold has played great USC I know Juju's a freshman but they have grad transfers that have been there they have grad transfers with Juju for me the defense that they can play like UConn cannot afford to get in foul trouble whatsoever mm. And I, I just think USC, they have more pieces. Like Paige and Juju are amazing. I think USC can get up and down mm -hmm. a little bit more. I had them winning earlier right. in, the black, in the bracket when I saw it. Right. And so watching them, I still think it's USC. Our rematch of the national championship game, LSU, Iowa. Who you got real quickly and why? I have the LSU Tigers because their size and Angel Reese and Anissa Morrow and their speed with Flage Johnson pushing tempo and getting out in transition and her length defensively, those three things combined with them coming in with the chip on their shoulder that they just did it last year, Haley Van Lith having something to prove. I just think they have more talented pieces that they can utilize. If one player is struggling, they can lean on somebody else. Last question. Kim Mulkey, coach at LSU, has been embroiled in some headlines, to say the least. One where she's complaining about a Washington Post reporter and quote-unquote hit job that they were going to do on her turned out to be much ado about nothing because it's, up, it's, it's more of what we already knew about her. Uh, but then the L.A. Times obviously calling her players dirty deputantes before they ultimately had to retract that, omit that, send out a different edited edition, um, and, and basically acknowledge it didn't meet their editorial standards. Your thought about Kim Mulkey, what she's made news for, um, and how it's been received? You know, Kim Kim is obviously very polarizing, but I think the one thing that I've been impressed with with her team is they somehow seem to thrive in chaos. Like, the one thing that you can't argue with is that her team has pulled together every time that they've needed to. There are things I don't agree with, 
on both sides. I don't agree with the article whatsoever. The article was disrespectful. I don't know how you say something doesn't meet editorial standards Deputy that's Tosh, already yeah. been put out into the world. That doesn't make any sense. If it didn't meet right. standards, it shouldn't have been put out into the world. Right. Uh, he, you know, stood by her players and defended them in that moment and for that article. And I respect that. And there have been other things that I haven't agreed with all the time that Kim Mulkey has done. But the one thing I'm concerned with are her players performing and do they pull together when they need to? And with all the distractions that they've had going on, be it from an article, be it from their coach's behavior, the players have found a way to pull together. And this will be the biggest test of whether or not they can do that again. Yeah, I don't blame her one bit for calling out the L.A. Times and the de dirty deputants was completely Ridiculous. uncalled for, no doubt about it. One other thing I want to say about Kim Mulkey, 24 seasons as a head coach, three-time coach of the year, four-time national champion, and has never, ever, ever had a season in 24 years where she has won less than 20 games. That is absolutely phenomenal. So are you, Andrea Carter. Appreciate you coming on the show for the first time. Thank you so much, and you know I'm going to be glued to my TV tonight. I know you are, too. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Stephen. I appreciate you.